Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to take a look at drawing a spooky subject, a skull, on bee stipple paper using charcoal. Now maybe charcoal has been a pain in the neck for you, but there's no reason to go and lose your head about it. In this lesson I'm going to show you how easy it is to create an accurate drawing of a skull in a short period of time. Now if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, I would encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified when new lessons like this are posted. And also if you like this video, give it a like. That'll definitely help things out. Now let's get into the tutorial. But I can't remember where I put my charcoal. In this lesson, we're going to be working on stipple paper by the B Paper Company. Now this paper features a very unique surface that is heavily textured, which will be important in our final drawing. We'll begin here on the B stipple paper using a graphite pencil. Here I'm using an HB graphite pencil. I want my marks to be visible, but I want them to be light, so I'm going to be using a very light touch for this initial sketch. We begin by finding a location for the top of our skull and the bottom of our skull, and these are somewhat fluid destinations or approximations. As you'll see, they'll change slightly during the process. Then I'm starting to find the areas where I see strong contrast. So I'm drawing lines where I see an edge or a difference in value between dark and light locations. I'm not going to draw all the details here with a graphite pencil. I'm just getting a general idea of where I'm seeing contrast. And while I'm striving for accuracy, I'm also leaving myself open to some discrepancies between the photo reference and the drawing. So if everything is not perfectly accurate, it's okay for this simple sketch. I'll draw a few loose marks for the teeth, and then I'll go back and refine the eye openings. You can see I'm making multiple marks with the graphite pencil, just trying to find the correct mark. Now, B stipple paper is a relatively tough surface to work on, so we don't really have to worry too much about creating grooves in the surface of the paper with the HB graphite pencil. But if you're working on regular drawing paper, you might be aware of this. If you put too much pressure on the graphite pencil, it can create small indentations, which are hard to fill in with the charcoal. With my graphite sketch in place, I can switch over to a charcoal pencil, and you can really see the texture of the paper showing through here. Now, I'm not going to do any blending or smudging for this drawing. I'm just going to work with the texture of the paper. Now, this paper, as I mentioned before, is very unique. You can see the pattern that's created with light to medium applications. And when we apply a little bit of a heavier application, we can still see little specks of the white showing through. That, again, is thanks to the coarse texture of this paper. Now, this is an advantage and a disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to develop defined details on the surface, but it's a lot easier to create a range of value in a short period of time, as you can see here with the cheekbone. Now, as I'm working, I'm paying attention to the areas of highlight or the areas of lightest value. We want to leave these areas open as we're adding the charcoal. You'll also notice that I'm starting on the left side of the picture plane, and then progressively I'm going to work my way to the right and lower down the picture plane. I'm doing this simply to keep the palm of my hand out of the way of the drawing so I don't smear any of the graphite that I've applied. Now I've switched over to a stick charcoal, and this is all compressed charcoal that I'm using, so no vine charcoal here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the dark value behind the back edge of the skull so that I have some contrast there. That will help me better evaluate the values as I add them to the drawing. Now before working too far down the front of the skull, I'm going to go ahead and add some tone and value to the top part of the skull here. I'm using an extremely light touch here with the charcoal pencil. You can see I'm holding the pencil very low down on the shaft so that it's just barely making contact with the surface of the paper. As we make strokes with the pencil, we're considering the cross contours or the plane in which each one of the marks is crossing over. This is going to affect the directional stroke that I make. And it's also going to help create the illusion of form, very subtly but still in a way that's important. You can see that on each plane, the direction of my stroke changes so that it flows over the form of that particular section. Now, as we continue to work our way down the picture plane, I'm going to add a little bit more of that dark background at the top, and then we can, again, get a better idea of our value relationships. 
Then it's back to the center part of the skull working in one of the eye openings. And in this eye opening on the right, we can see some subtle shifts of value inside. So we want to make sure that we capture that in our drawing as well. Now, since this sketch is loose and quick, and since the surface dictates it, we're not going to include all the details that we see. We just want an impression of the skull. We want a loose sketch, and this paper helps us to achieve that loose look. Now, our light source obviously is originating from the right side of the picture plane. This means that all of the parts of the skull that stick out or protrude are going to be lighter on the right side compared to the left side. Even still, we still need to make some of the values on the right side a little bit darker. So instead of leaving them white, we're going to create areas of gray, of course. We just want to make sure that our value contrast is there so that we preserve the illusion of the light source in the final drawing. Now, even though this drawing is a loose sketch, it only took me about 45 minutes to create, it's important to note that I am taking my time as I apply the charcoal to the surface. I'm paying attention to the values that I see in the reference. I'm generalizing and simplifying them as I add them to the drawing surface. So I'm continuing to go back and forth between the photo reference and the drawing surface, making mental notes about the shapes of value that I see and the location of where they are in our reference, and then applying them to the drawing surface. So even though this is a quick sketch, I'm still taking my time. Hopefully that makes sense. Now as we work down to the lower part of the skull and in the teeth section, I'm going to give an impression of the teeth again without defining all of the details. And since we only really clearly see the right side of the bottom of the jawbone, I'm only going to include a range of value here. On the left side, we're going to focus mainly on the shadowed shapes that we see. Now back with the stick charcoal, I can go ahead and fill in some of the darker values on the left side, including the dark background. As I'm filling in the background with the stick compressed charcoal, I'm changing the direction of the strokes that I make, going horizontally, vertically, diagonal, and so on, so that I have a more consistent application. We'll patiently work our way all the way down to the bottom of the picture plane, applying the charcoal in this manner. And now our drawing of a skull, our spooky drawing of a skull on bee stipple paper is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Now, remember, if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, I encourage you to check out the membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and weekly live lessons, which are all stored and recorded in our vault, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to learn more about the program and start your free trial, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below this video. Now, if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, Again, I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well, and that will put you on our mailing list so you're notified when new lessons are posted. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.